What's going on guys? Danny here from Metal Couch. And before I begin, I would like to apologize to my fan base for not uploading frequently. I've been, I, I just had a very big lack of creative drive. Um, just, I really haven't felt like, I haven't felt into it. I felt like I, I haven't been able to do a review for a while because I just, I feel like it won't be good. But now I'm kind of out of that rut, back into the swing of things, and I figured what a, a good way to come back would be to go through the Iron Maiden discography. Now, Iron Maiden is a very famous, very prestigious band, and for the most part, I enjoy most of Iron Maiden's albums. And to go back and to look at all of these and kind of rip them open a little bit, have a look and see what's inside, break it down a little bit, it's something that I've wanted to do for a while. And I really haven't done a discography review since the Metallica one, and what a better way to dive into another one than Iron Maiden, one of the most famous metal bands in the world. Now, we, we're going to start with the self-titled album, of course, and this is where I kind of turn off a little bit from some Iron Maiden fans. I don't hate... Paul Diano was a vocalist for Iron Maiden, but I, I'm not sure if it's because I'm used to Bruce Dickinson, but I just feel like the first two Iron Maiden albums are completely different creatures than what we have now. And even Bruce Dickinson had some albums out there that, um, that didn't really fit what Iron Maiden was, and we'll get to those in the, uh, in the coming days. But Paul Liano, to me, in the era of Iron Maiden, was more of a punk-oriented style, even though, from my knowledge, they weren't really too big of fans of punk. And I do like Diano as a vocalist, it's just that I don't normally enjoy too much material from this era. But from the first album, we open it with Prowler, which... Uh, lyrically, how should I put this? Lyrically, it's very pervasive. Definitely something that you wouldn't find on an Iron Maiden album today. That's still a great song, though. Uh, Remember Tomorrow, I can't really remember too much from Remember Tomorrow. Um, it's, I, I know it's a very famous track, but it's... It's one that doesn't really stand out in my mind. It could be because they don't play it too often. But after Remember Tomorrow, we start getting into an all-out assault from Iron Maiden with tracks like Running Free, which is a mainstay in their live set today, or Phantom of the Opera, which they may play occasionally. Phantom of the Opera, in fact, has some riffs that I just enjoy playing on guitar, and I warm up with them a lot. And... It, to me, it's one of my top ten favorite Iron Maiden songs, despite how much I don't like the Diano era Iron Maiden. And then after Phantom of the Opera, we get Transylvania, which is an instrumental, uh, a very nice instrumental, which leads into Strange World. I can't really remember too much about Strange World, but it's the next track, which... Charlotte the Harley. From my understanding, there are more songs in a supposed, I guess you could say, a song trilogy, I think it's a trilogy, uh, detailing a story of Charlotte the Harlot. I believe the next time we will visit that story arc is in the Number of the Beast album with 22 Acacia Avenue. And I can't... I, I, it's just... In this album, sonically speaking, I know that it's a very low-budget album. I understand that this is their debut album. But it's just something about their tone on this album that I, I'm not exactly... Um, it doesn't sound like they're going for a metal feel, in my eyes. I mean, of course there are going to be people that disagree with me. But sonically, I don't really enjoy um, the sound of this album. Lyrically, I think it's great. Uh, and to close out the album, we have the title track, Iron Maiden, which is a mainstay in their live sets today. Overall, 
the first Iron Maiden album is a classic. I, this is probably one of those must-own albums if you're a metal fan. Despite how much I don't really enjoy Diano compared to Dickinson, it's still something that I'm proud to have in my library. And it's a piece of metal history. And the fact that these guys started out from a small club band and were able to make it to one of the biggest, if not the biggest, metal band on the planet, traveling all over the world in their own jet, no less, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, how did they get so big? And I think we'll find out why in the upcoming albums. Next time we'll be taking a look at Killers. And if I had to give this album out of a grade out of 10, I would probably give it a solid 7. It has its flaws sonically, but overall this is a classic album and you can't pass it up. It's definitely a must-own for your library. Danny here from Metal Couch, signing off.